So I'm on the side of a race car, if you see my face oh, there. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. It's time for the Real Estate Halftime Show. Sit back, relax, and listen to Nashville's premier inside scoop to real estate with the mortgage extraordinaire himself, James Harper. Hello, everyone. This is James Harper with the uh, Real Estate Halftime Show. And today we have a very special guest, Angela Brewer. Thank you for coming. Thanks for inviting me. Yes. And so we're not going to, we're, it's going to be a really informal interview. We, uh, Angela and I have known each other for quite some time, uh, go back in history, uh, a little ways. And so all we want to kind of talk about is how you decided to one day jump into the real estate business because you've really done a handful of things in the uh, uh, customer service slash service industry. And so you've met a lot of people, you've networked with a lot of people. And so it was probably an easy segue for you to start talking about real estate and talking about what you do. But what was your why as you got uh, for why you got into the business? Well, why I got into the business, yes. gosh, it's been about 10 years ago. I went to go buy a house myself and I was having a hard time just going and seeing homes, working around realtor schedules and um, finally loved a house, put an offer on a house, uh, went through the very stressful process. I didn't know anything. I didn't know there was earnest money involved. I'm trying to scramble up some money. I didn't know there was, you know, appraisal money. I didn't know any of that. I wasn't informed. I just thought, hey, I want to buy a house. Let's do it. And uh, went all the way through to the uh, lender needing a termite letter and almost mm. didn't close on my house. So I thought, I don't want anyone to ever experience that. I was a uh, single mom at the time and things were stressful enough. Everybody's got their day-to-day, -day, you know, in and outs. And I just really thought, why should anybody experience that when it's one of the biggest purchases of your life? So I got really interested and intrigued in the process. So I started running out and uh, leasing out my, my friends that were in the military and having to move off and owned a home and uh, really got inspired by that. And I also was in the food industry, waitressing and around a lot of people and, um, Meeting two, meeting three was my heart back then <laughs> and uh, had the liar's table, the men that come in every morning and you will learn things. You will. Um, it's not really lies. It's it's learning about life, you know. And so um, I really just started out with a, uh, a game plan of, you know what? I love people. I love um, solving problems or making people happy at their end with mm. me. So if I'm feeding you, I want your stomach to be full. I want you to enjoy your experience and come back again. So I kind of took that into yes, my real estate. I want to personalize it. I want every client to feel like they're my only client. And uh, and I want to help them through every step because it's not just a one time, one time deal. You know, oh, okay, so I have this amount of money. You just, you know, do what you need to do with it. It's really learning how to buy a home when you're going through the process and you need someone to navigate that. And I went by the blonde Italian realtor because I'm big about family and friends. Once you're in my circle, you stay in my circle. And uh, my hashtag, I know a guy, it's bringing like lenders in like you, like Fairway, who I trust. I know they're going to get to the end game and a uh, title, you know, appraisers, you know, I know you're going to do good. And mm -hmm. And, you know, home inspectors and just knowing who's going to show up, you know, yeah. who's going to show up, who you can be uh, loyal with that's going to get the job done. And, um, you know, I'm not going to send somebody out there that's not going to do a good job. And if I'm referring you out, you know, then I've used you. Well, I think one of the biggest problems I have is 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 bragging on our successes, right? I mean, I think, you know, you hear a lot of it on the – you maybe hear or see a lot of it on the Internet, maybe not so much. Uh, through social media, but I don't really do a good job of kind of bragging on myself. So if you were going to brag on yourself and put you on the spot, uh, what are some of the testimonies that you hear from your clients or through your clients about the experience they've had with you? So, yeah, what a I, great question. I hate bragging too, because, you know, we're in hopefully this industry to help others, right? So we're like service workers in a different sense, right? We're putting that staple down for this is their home. This is what they're going to come home to every day. So I really enjoy, um, you know, first time home buyers. And then I get to see them, you know, 
get married, have a baby. But what testimony do they give you back? Oh, what, what do they give what, me what back? What do they tell you about okay. the experience? So, Not your experience. Yeah, so when they're what's bragging. What's their experience? When they're bragging on me, they're like, hey, you know, any question I had, you know, you were kind of enlightening me on the experience that I did not know that, hey, I, I had a client that waitressed and they were going to use cash money. And I was like, don't do that. You know, make sure you're putting stuff in the bank, do a paper trail, you know, just take them through the process. And they said they really were hopeless. They thought that they could never buy a home. Mm -hmm. And they said, you navigated me and it like changed their life. You know, they were up in the debt, you know, just trying to pay their rent and everything else. And they actually got into a house cheaper. Yes. And estates, you know, family members, it's really hard when there's a death or really hard when there's a divorce. And they said, you know, you were easy to talk to, you know, people's emotions get high. Relatives feel like a counselor sometimes. And, uh, and I don't mind being that shoulder for them to make sure that they're okay. And everybody's got, you know, a different home sweet home. And they say, you know, Angela, you navigated me good and you listened to me and my needs and what I needed. And at the end of the day, when they're giving me a Google review or, yeah. or you know, one of those um, five stars, you know, five star reviews. they're saying that I made sure that they were acknowledged, they felt at ease and they were glad that they made the step and it was the best decision that they could make. And I really love i gotta lay my head down at night and i i'm just that is my number one goal i want to make sure that they were happy with the decision and that they'll refer me out and it doesn't really matter about reviews to me i just want them referrals <laughs> yes well I, I will tell you that i think that um from all the times i've worked with you i think probably one of your biggest character traits or there's a couple uh number one is passion mm -hmm. and number two is your heart and so when you combine both of those together, I mean, that is a pretty awesome experience, I think, for anyone using you as as a realtor because, um, number one, you never give up, and, and that passion overtakes you never wanting to give up and trying to figure out a solution all the time. Right. And we're in a day and age where everybody has challenges. Oh, yeah. So if you're listening out there today, obviously, um, it's okay if you have problems. It's okay if you have challenges. It does not mean you can't get into a house. And I think one of the characteristics of you is that you don't ever get up, give up, and and I don't either. That's and right. I said, so sometimes that yin and yang definitely helps when you have a team. Yes. Uh, but uh, then your heart goes right along with that. Right. And your heart, your heart is uh, where you get into the emotional uh, purse strings and their heart strings of that individual, right? Um, or that couple, and help trying to keep them motivated, keep them energized, keep them excited, and take that fear out of the whole process. Because when you bought your first house, as you said just a few oh, minutes it was, ago, uh, it was like it was like hell, right? Yeah, it, was it shouldn't horrible. be. It shouldn't be no, hell. It shouldn't be hell. It's a um, big, big deal. It should be a celebration at the end. And, yeah. you know, I think um, people are like when it was in that let's win, you know, the um, the offer. You know, I think I had to cal calm down my buyers. I'm mm. like, it's not about winning um, because you're going to be stuck with this, you know, mortgage for 30 years or until you sell. So I really break it down. And, you know, some people get like really into the staging part of a house. They see the pretty decor and the house is at the top of the freaking, you know, brink of their price point. And then I start taking away like visually, okay, like if it didn't have all that furniture in there and we're putting your furniture in your first time home buyer and they're like, I got to buy a couch, all this. Do you want to live just solely for your home to come home to? Or do you want to be able to go out and have date nights and, you know, kind of just bring back reality because all the shiny things are always mm -hmm. exciting at first, but you got to really break down what that particular buyer is looking for or what that person that's selling, what's their ending goal. You know, you have to really listen, listen to them, dig yeah. deep and make sure, you know, personalities, their emotions, 
you know, are all um, thought of and, you know, you have to go to each individual differently. You know, not every deal is the same. And so I, I'm a big believer in uh, kind of love languages and really understanding oh, yeah. uh, time, turf, and terms with a borrower. So, you know, some people that work third shift, for example, you don't want to call them when they're right in the middle of their sleeping. Uh, right. Some people... They don't want to talk to you at all. They would rather text. Some people want to meet face to face. Exactly. So do you take that into into the equation when you meet somebody for the first time? Oh, yeah. And, and, and how important is that for your business? So the first time that I'll meet with a client, I try to get them face to face. I'm all about kind of the old school. I like to meet you. I want to put that voice with a face. A hug, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like <laughs> tell you everything's going to be okay. And I'm going to, you know, kind of go down a Mother list him. and not overwhelm you, yeah. you know, but uh, yeah, I want to know what they're passionate about, what they do for a living, mm -hmm. their family, what's important to them and know their schedule. So in my phone, I will put their schedule in my phone. So if I have to contact them, right. they're contacting me. So a lot of people have a different perception of what realtors do, right? Um, we're not a nine to five or eight to five or cut it off. Um, I think hopefully what sets different realtors apart and what I hope sets me apart is I do have boundaries to an extent, but everybody's schedule is different. So I've had people that work third shift and they're on the way home and I need them to sign a doc. I want them to understand that doc before they e-sign, you know? So they're okay to call me. We're okay to connect later because I know that's their schedule. I've got some nurses, you know, they're working them 12 hour shifts. They got to go in early and, you know, they knocked out. I know I better not contact them. I'm going to let them contact me and I'll give them a text. So you got to learn your client. And that's the first thing when I meet with them, I will bring them a sweet treat. I'll find out, <laughs> I'll find out what your, uh, what your love is, well, you know, yeah. if you're a chocolate person or if you're, yeah. you know, I'm Italian, Candy so or... I'm used to uh, feeding people and uh, making them happy because I truly feel like if your stomach is full, your She's brain can She's brought me a think. lot of cookies, by the way. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and so I will try to find out what, what you really love because nobody is good when they're hangry, which is like they're hungry and they're angry because they're hungry. So <laughs> I've, I really take that term to heart. So nobody needs to be hangry when we're doing a big decision or looking at homes. So, so what she's saying is before we go look at houses, I'm going to feed you. Yeah, I'm pretty much going to feed you. I'm going to have snacks <laughs> in, my, in my vehicle and I'm going to take care of you. That way you have a full process going on in your brain of not like I'm hungry I can't think you know um, so it's just little things that you want to personalize you know to your clients also I want to let them know how I'm going to negotiate or why I think we should go in with this offer this way but everybody's personality is different so you got to know your client because there might be a client that has gone through this process a couple of times so they're familiar so you don't have to explain every detail and then first time home buyers, they're, you know, a little overwhelmed because there's mm -hmm. so much to explain. So you have to know kind of where to ease, you know, that transition of, okay, this is what we need today. And this is what we're looking for, you know, at the end game, if they accept the offer and go through all the details so they can prepare and they're not in shock like I was because yeah, it answer. was super overwhelming. Yeah. So, um, you know, when you think about uh, some of the craziest experiences that you've been through, um, and, and you think about, uh, I mean, cause there's real, I mean, we could sit here and talk for hours about oh, yeah. some of the craziest transactions that have happened or maybe didn't happen. Uh, I actually had a client that, and I felt so bad for him that they, they were one day away from buying a house and literally the house burned down the night before. Oh. So Gosh. thankfully they didn't oh, buy it, yeah. but literally the house burned down the night before. And so, you know, you just never know, as they say, yeah. nothing's final till the ink is dry. I did have one actually last year that um, we did the home inspection appraisal. Everything was a go. Um, had service workers, young couple, so sweet, nice. And um, found a for sale by owner off of Facebook. I was at the CMA Fest something huge out here in Nashville and I uh, was walking in and got a phone call. Hey, Angela, I saw this on Facebook, sends it to me. I call and uh, get them in, you know, we're going to go look at it right after I get out, you know? And so they're all excited. Everything goes good. They love the house. We get through the process and we're down to, we do the walkthrough and uh, we're down to closing day and they call me to say, Hey, 
hey, Angela, we passed the house on the way to title, and there's um, the uh, electric company's there. So we pull in, and the uh, the box is gone. I said, what do you mean the box is gone? Like, the whole side of <laughs> <laughs> the house where your box is that connects, the line going to it, I guess, caught on fire, and they had to take it off. And so, therefore, there was no electricity, and the homeowner didn't know. Oh, so wow. we called the homeowner. We let her know, hey, is there something going on with the house? Like, they tried to transfer the electric because I always say, line it up, you know, get your electric yeah. water, everything ready. They call the electric company. They're like, oh, you can't hook up the electric. The electric's not there. There was an issue. Um, it was found to be unsafe, so they disconnected it, and you have to have an electrician come out and, like, look at it and, and replace it. So having that phone call, they went into panic mode. Well, I call and uh, the agent, and she's like, what? I know nothing about this. So literally in a 24-hour time, they couldn't close that day. They were really nervous. We got an electrician out there. They changed it over, fixed it, and we closed the next day. But I think That's we crazy. probably called... I don't know, six different services oh, to yeah. get them out there and, yeah. and got them out there. So that was kind of crazy bizarre, you know, for that to happen. But thankfully, you know, 24 I don't think, hour turnaround. I don't think most people know, and, and every agent is different. And some agents uh, I've worked with will just basically say, that's not my job. That's not my responsibility. That's no. not my That's not my thing to do. I mean, I've literally had them tell me that. And then there's other people like yourself that will be making those extra calls. You'll be doing things way outside of probably your scope or your uh, uh, wheelhouse of expertise just to try to facilitate right. the transaction, to keep things moving, to keep things going. Like, you don't know anything about calling electricians. No, but you, <laughs> you find out. You figure it out. Yeah, you you have to solve a problem, just like solve you're in school, problem. right? Yeah. You In this case, we got to find the expert, right? Yeah. So got experts in home inspection, got home, you know, lenders. So when it comes down to issues at the house where I hope that it sets me aside is where I hashtag, I know a guy is because I, I have plumbers, electricians, you know, I have these people that I can, you know, literally call and say, Hey, I've got an issue. I just had an issue with a new build, um, did a walkthrough. They said they were going to fix where it looked like the roof kind of had a little slope in it. So day before close, we go to do the walkthrough and the roof looks the same, but the trick is there's a porch. And so we can't get underneath that porch to look at the roof because you got to access it. So I call my roofer yeah. and I say, Hey, he comes off of and a it goes roof on and on and yeah. on. Yeah. And he jumps up and down that roof. I get a video. They did not put the knee wall up. I'm not a roofer. Mm -hmm. I'm not a home inspector. Don't <laughs> claim to be, don't want to be, No. but you got to get to that expert who can show what's going on because my due diligence is to my client. Yeah. So I don't want to put him in that new build or that house, any house without what I say is down on this document is going to happen for them because that's my responsibility. I'm not the home inspector. I'm not the roofer, but I can get you to someone who is and can give you all the knowledge on it and make sure that that is taken care of for you. Because I feel like as a realtor, we're navigating so much and we do have to watch and make sure that we're not putting our, opinion on what the experts say and leave it up to them, but we can get you to them. Yeah. So the important message there is if you are in the process of wanting to list or sell your home or just be a buyer for a new home, interview That's your right. agent, make sure they are right fit for you personality wise. They're yes. going to go to bat for you. They're going to negotiate for you. You're going to be able to uh, communicate with them. And also, do you feel like they're going to go that extra mile? I believe you're the one for that. Uh, with most individuals that I have ever come across, you've been probably the one of the best when it comes to uh, just, like I said, having that heart and that passion. So um, if you need to reach out to Angela Brewer, you're at Benchmark Realty, but how do they get a hold of you? What, what's your website? So I have different avenues. I'm a... Well, the world is social media right now. So I've got a Facebook and Instagram. So Angela Brewer, I've got a business page. 
Um, even if you put in, I know a guy hashtag, you'll probably find me <laughs> uh, hashtag that a lot. I know a guy. And, um, and then I like to keep up with not just real estate posts, but kind of, you know, just fun interactions on, social on social media. Social media. So social you can media. find me Angel on there. The Brewer. That's right. And I've got, um, of course my, uh, my business cards, I'm pretty big about investing in, um, young people too. So I'm on the side of a race car. If you see my face oh, there, I did not know that. Yeah. I, uh, at Highland Rim, the, blonde, the Italian blonde driving around in yeah, circles on a racetrack. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and so really referred, that's a, know, that's a, that's a good one. That's a new yeah, one. Different marketing. Think, think outside the box. Yeah. You know, my dad was a race car driver for a little while. So uh, I thought that was pretty cool. And it was a 16 year old race car driver. So I uh, started up a little bit for him and, uh, and I'm on TikTok, so and then this podcast. But Angela Brewer, I think it's Angela dot Brewer on uh, Facebook, and then uh, of course just look me up. You will find me, and uh, and I hope that you find me through references because yes. I work a lot off of references. And um, well, one last question here, one last question. Why? I mean, lots of talk in social media and around around the, the uh, real estate industry, now is a good time to buy. We hear all different answers from all different people, but I firmly believe that right now really is a good time to buy because this is the worst time of the year to purchase. Well, But uh, yeah. it can be the best time of the year. Why is that? So I have found, I'm going on my sixth year of being a realtor, and um so I've had a lot of first time home buyers that have been renting, you know, young, but they're paying sixteen hundred to two thousand dollars for this rent. And uh, so right now, even on a lot of listings, um, December, pretty much December to February, I kind of see that there's Slow. a lot of builder incentives, a lot of sellers are giving perks, you know, they'll pay for closing costs, buy downs, you know, just closed out on one where they gave us all the closing costs. We even got some money for the buy down. You know, um, got a refrigerator thrown in on a um, new build. So I always say, if you don't ask, you don't know. So the worst you can hear is a no. So I feel like the slower time when everybody's kind of a little I sitting call it, back. I, I think you know? I think it's also coming off the holiday blues. Yeah. I mean, after after Christmas, it's like okay, we got to start life over again in January and February. Yeah. And but I think that is really the good time to buy. It typically is our slower months as well. But right now, I think this January, February, and March is an awesome time to buy because the rates will start probably coming down next year. Right. But that also means what prices will go up. More be buyers less will incentives, come out. Yeah. Uh, with sellers. Uh, maybe not get the same kind of closing cost uh, right. availability. So I think in the next three months, you can get the best opportunity for getting the closing cost that you need and the sales price that you yes. want. A lot of more negotiating, I, I feel like, um, just this past year, but even just this past couple months, it's like people are ready to sell their homes. They understand the market. You know, if their agent is upfront and honest with them, they know, you know, how much move room they have. And uh, so I always say invest in yourself and your family. You put money into rent right now because the interest rate is high. It's no different when you're putting rent into something you will never get back. So you can always refi. Yes. You can always relook at your rate, but you might not be able to find the house that you really want. Or have the equity, yeah. Yeah, so there's there's always perks to things when people think, oh, this is a bad time. A lot of people are buying because they know – my rent is not invested in us, you know, and I'm putting this in there uh, for $200 more a month. You know, they look at their budget. They're like, we can do this and we can try to do that rate buy down, you know, so it, it goes hand in hand. So it's always worth a look. And I feel like December to February is always a good time where it's just, I feel like a little more incentives going on right now, yeah. particularly. So, well, we always love the Italian blonde, yeah. uh, Angela Brewer <laughs> here at fairway. We appreciate everything you always do for us and advocate for us. And thank you for coming in today. Yeah, thanks for having it's me. It's been awesome. <laughs> and we will see you next time That's here right. on the real estate halftime show. <laughs>